Swedish has a large vowel inventory, with nine vowels distinguished in quality and to some degree quantity, making 17 vowel phonemes in most dialects. Swedish pronunciation of most consonants is similar to that of other Germanic languages. Another notable feature is the pitch accent, which is unusual for European languages. There are 18 consonant phonemes of which and are show considerable variation depending on both social and dialectal context. Topic: <laughs> Standard pronunciation. There is no uniform nationwide spoken standard Swedish. Instead there are several regional standard varieties acrolects or prestige dialects, i.e. the most intelligible or prestigious forms of spoken Swedish, each within its area. The differences in the phonology of the various forms of prestigious Central Swedish can be considerable, although as a rule less marked than between localized dialects, including differences in prosody, vowel quality and assimilation. The differences between the various regional dialects may be compared with those of General American, Australian English and British received pronunciation. In Sweden, the Central Swedish varieties often go under the name of Riksvenska national Swedish. <laughs> Vowels Swedish has nine vowels that, as in many other Germanic languages, exist in pairs of long and short versions. The length co-varies with the quality of the vowels, as shown in the table below long vowels in the first column, short in the second, with short variants being more centered and lax. Traditionally, length has been viewed as the primary distinction, with quality being secondary. No short vowels appear in open stressed syllables. The front vowels appear in rounded unrounded pairs. Central Standard Swedish, is near close near front. In other dialects it may be central. O, or mid. A, has been variously described as central a and front a. Rounded vowels have two types of rounding. And, u, are compressed. And, y, o, and its pre, r, allophone o, o stroke, and its pre, r, allophone and, o, are protruded, i, e, and, type of rounding is the primary way of distinguishing from, y, o, especially in Central Standard Swedish. In stressed syllables, o stroke, with a few exceptions, and, o, are lowered to, ash, a, and, respectively, when preceding, r, era, squared ra, squared ash ra, honor, listen, art, art, ash, p, listen, aura, squared o stroke ra, squared ra, ear, listen, Door, doer, doer, door. Listen, the low allophones are becoming unmarked in younger speakers of Stockholm Swedish, so that lasa to read and kopa to buy are pronounced squared l ash saw and squared pa instead of standard squared l saw and squared o stroke pa. These speakers often also pronounce pre rhotic o stroke and o even lower, i.e., and. This is especially true for the long allophone. Also, the allophone is sometimes difficult to distinguish from the long. In some pronunciations, traditionally characteristic of the varieties spoken around Gothenburg and in Ostergotland, but today more common, e.g., in Stockholm and especially in younger speakers, o and merge into o. Words like fordomande judging, pronounced f -om and in standard Swedish, and fordoman dumbing, pronounced f -m and in standard Swedish, are then often pronounced similarly, if not identically, in Central Standard Swedish, unstressed is slightly retracted, but is still a front vowel rather central. However, the latter pronunciation is commonly found in Southern Swedish. Therefore, bega to commit is pronounced bo in Central Standard Swedish and bo in Southern Swedish. Before r, Southerners may use a back vowel. In Central Standard Swedish, a true schwa is commonly found as a vocalic release of word final linus stops, as in e.g. bad beady, bed. In many central and eastern areas, including Stockholm, the contrast between short and e is lost, except before r, when the subtle vowel distinction between the words hera master and mar mare is kept. The loss of this contrast has the effect that heta heat and hata cap are pronounced the same. In Central Standard Swedish, long is weakly rounded. The rounding is stronger in Gothenburg and weaker in most North Swedish dialects. One of the varieties of i is made with a constriction that is more forward than it is usual. Peter Latifoged and Ian Maddison describe this vowel as being pronounced by slightly lowering the body of the tongue while simultaneously raising the blade of the tongue. 
Acoustically this pronunciation is characterized by having a very high F3, and an F2 which is lower than that in E. They suggest that this may be the usual Stockholm pronunciation of I. There is some variation in the interpretations of vowel lengths phonemicity. Ellert 1964, for example, treats vowel quantity as its own separate phoneme a prosidmi, so that long and short vowels are allophones of a single vowel phoneme. Patterns of diphthongs of long vowels occur in three major dialect groups. In Central Standard Swedish, the high vowels, i, y, and, u, can be phonetically a short vowel followed by the corresponding fricative also described as approximant i, y, b and u, w, or i, j, e, b and u, w. The rounding of the fricative, approximant agrees with the rounding of the vowel, so that, j, is unrounded, is protruded, more narrowly transcribed, j, and both, b, b and w, w, are compressed, more narrowly transcribed, b, b and E, O stroke, and O, are often realized as centering diphthongs E, O stroke, and O. In southern Swedish dialects, particularly in Scania, the diphthongs are preceded by a rising of the tongue from a central position so that, and, are realized as E, and, A, respectively, i.e. rising diphthongs. A third type of distinctive diphthongs occur in the dialects of Gotland. The pattern of diphthongs is more complex than those of southern and eastern Sweden. E, O stroke, and, tend to rise while an, and, O, fall, U, I, Y, and, are not diphthongized at all. Consonants The table below shows the Swedish consonant phonemes and the range of their realizations in spoken standard Swedish. T, L, are dental T, L, but N, D, S, can be either dental N, D, S, or alveolar N, D, S. If D, is alveolar, then N, is also alveolar. Dental realization of N, D, is the predominant one in Central Standard Swedish. <laughs> stops Initial fortis stops, p, t, k, are aspirated in stressed position, but unaspirated when preceded by, s, within the same morpheme. Hence ko, cow, is, k, u, but s, k, o, shu, becomes, skew. Compare English, k, u, cool, versus, skew, school. Preaspiration of medial and final fortis stops, including the devoicing of preceding sonorants is common, though its length and normativity varies from dialect to dialect, being optional and idiolectal in Central Standard Swedish but obligatory in, for example, the Swedish dialects of Grasso, Vemdalen and Arjaplag. In Grasso, preaspiration is blocked in certain environments such as an s, following the fortis consonant or a morpheme boundary between the vowel and the consonant, while it is a general feature of fortis medial consonants in Central Standard Swedish. When not preaspirated, medial and final fortis stops are simply unaspirated. In clusters of fortis stops, the second presonorant Stop is unaspirated and the former patterns with other medial final stops that is, it is either unaspirated or is preaspirated, the phonetic attributes of preaspiration also vary. In the Swedish of Stockholm, preaspiration is often realized as a fricative subject to the character of surrounding vowels or consonants so that it may be labial, velar, or dental, it may also surface as extra length of the preceding vowel. In the province of Harhedalen, though, it resembles H or X. The duration of preaspiration is highest in the dialects of Vemdalen and Arjaplag. Helgeson notes that preaspiration is longer after short vowels, in lexically stressed syllables, as well as in pre-pausal position. Fricatives S, is dental s, in Central Standard Swedish, but retracted alveolar s, in Bleken, Bohuslan, Halland and Scania, the Swedish fricatives and are often considered to be the most difficult aspects of Swedish pronunciation for foreign students. The combination of occasionally similar and rather unusual sounds as well as the large variety of partly overlapping allophones of often presents difficulties for non-natives in telling the two apart. The existence of a third sibilant in the form of s tends to confuse matters even more, and in some cases realizations that are labiodental can also be confused with f. In Finland Swedish is an affricate t or t, the Swedish phoneme the sje sound 
or voiceless postalveolar velar fricative and its alleged coarticulation is a difficult and complex issue debated amongst phoneticians. Though the acoustic properties of its allophones are fairly similar, the realizations can vary considerably according to geography, social status, age, gender as well as social context and are notoriously difficult to describe and transcribe accurately. Most common are various, like sounds, with occurring mainly in northern Sweden and in Finland. A voiceless uvular fricative, chi, can sometimes be used in the varieties influenced by major immigrant languages like Arabic and Kurdish. The different realizations can be divided roughly into the following categories. Dark sounds and X, commonly used in the Southern Standard Swedish. Some of the varieties specific, but not exclusive, to areas with a larger immigrant population commonly realize the phoneme as a voiceless uvular fricative chi. Light sounds used in the northern varieties and and or something in between in Finland Swedish. Combination of light and dark. Darker sounds are used as morpheme initials preceding stressed vowels sjuk sick station station while the lighter sounds are used before unstressed vowels and at the end of morphemes baggage baggage dush shower v and j are pronounced with weak friction and function phonotactically with the sonorants. Topic. Sonorants R. has distinct variations in Standard Swedish. The realization as an alveolar trill occurs among most speakers only in contexts where emphatic stress is used. In Central Swedish, it is often pronounced as a fricative transcribed as or approximant transcribed as which is especially frequent in weakly articulated positions such as word finally and somewhat less frequent in stressed syllable onsets, in particular after other consonants. It may also be an apico-alveolar tap. One of the most distinct features of the southern varieties is the uvular realization of r, which may be a trill, a fricative, or an approximant. The last one is the standard realization of r, in Danish. In most varieties of Swedish that use an alveolar r, in particular, the central and northern forms, the combination of r, with dental consonants, t, d, n, l, s, produces retroflex consonant realizations, a recursive sandy process called retroflexion. Thus, squared krta, map, is realized as squared ka, new road, north, as new, v nern, vanern, as vn, and frisk, fresh, as f ash k. The combination of r and l does not uniformly cause retroflexion, so that it may also be pronounced with two separate consonants rl, and even, occasionally in a few words and expressions, as a mere l. Thus sorrel murmur may be pronounced so, but also so rl. In Gothenburg and neighboring areas such as Mondal and Kungal, the retroflex consonants are substituted by alveolar ones, with their effects still remaining. For example, kvrn, is kvn, not kv, ho road, is ho d, not ho. However, rs, unlike what many other Swedes believe, is not s but, i.e., f epsilon rs, is f epsilon, not f epsilon s, as the adjacent table shows. This process is not limited by word boundaries, though there is still some sensitivity to the type of boundary between the r, and the dental in that retroflexion is less likely with boundaries higher up in the prosodic hierarchy. In the southern varieties, which use a uvular, r, retroflex realizations don't occur. For example, squared krta, map, is realized as squared k ta, etc. A double sequence, rr, usually won't trigger retroflexion so that spernat anti -sub -net is pronounced squared spar nt. The process of retroflexion is not limited to just one dental, and e.g. forced is pronounced f. Variations of l are not as common, though some phonetic variation exists, such as a retroflex flap that exists as an allophone in proximity to a labial or velar consonant e.g. glad, glad or after most long vowels, in casual speech, the nasals tend to assimilate to the place of articulation of a following obstruent so that, for example, han kom he came is pronounced ha km. <laughs> Stress and pitch As in English, there are many Swedish word pairs that are differentiated by stress. Formel frml, formula. Formal frml, formal stressed syllables differentiate two tones, often described as pitch accents, or tonal word accents by Scandinavian linguists. They are called acute and grave accent, tone, accent 1 and tone, accent 2, or single tone and double tone. 
The actual realizations of these two tones varies from dialect to dialect. In the central Swedish dialect of Stockholm, accent 1 is an LHL contour and accent 2 is an HLHL contour with the second peak in the second syllable. Generally, the grave accent is characterized by a later timing of the intonational pitch rise as compared with the acute accent. The so-called two-peaked dialects such as central and western Swedish also have another earlier pitch peak in the grave accent, hence the term two-peaked. The phonemicity of this tonal system is demonstrated in the nearly 300 pairs of two-syllable words differentiated only by their use of either grave or acute accent. Outside of these pairs, the main tendency for tone is that the acute accent appears in monosyllables since the grave accent cannot appear in monosyllabic words while the grave accent appears in polysyllabic words. Polysyllabic forms resulting from declension or derivation also tend to have a grave accent except when it is the definite article that is added. This tonal distinction has been present in Scandinavian dialects at least since Old Norse though a greater number of polysyllables now have an acute accent. These are mostly words that were monosyllabic in Old Norse, but have subsequently become disyllabic, as have many loanwords. For example, Old Norse komer comes has become kommer in Swedish with an acute accent. Acute accent, anden, a, ndn, or ndn, the duck from an duck in Central Swedish, this is a high, slightly falling tone followed by a low tone, that is, a single drop from high to low pitch spread over two syllables. Grave accent, anden, a, ndn, or ndn, the spirit from Andy spirit in Central Swedish, a mid-falling tone followed by a high-falling tone, that is, a double-falling tone. The exact realization of the tones also depends on the syllable's position in an utterance. For instance, at the beginning of an utterance, the acute accent may have a rising rather than slightly falling pitch on the first syllable. Also, these are word tones that are spread across the syllables of the word. In trisyllabic words with the grave accent, the second fall in pitch is distributed across the second and third syllables, with the result that the pitches are mid-low falling, high mid-falling, and low, respectively. Grave accent trisyllable, flickorna, Florida K A grave, or Florida K A. The girl's at position of the tone is dependent upon stress. The first stressed syllable has a higher falling tone, as does the following syllables in grave accented words. In most Finland Swedish varieties, however, the distinction between grave and acute accent is missing. A reasonably complete list of uncontroversial so called minimal pairs can be seen below. The two words in each pair are distinguished solely by having different tone. Acute versus grave. In those cases where both words are nouns, it would have been possible to list the genitive forms of the words as well, thereby creating another word pair, but this has been avoided. A few word pairs where one of the words is a plural form with the suffix or have been included. This is due to the fact that a vast majority of Swedish speakers in all parts of Sweden pronounce the suffix or the same way as er. Note that karatan, karatan is the only pair with more than two syllables although we would get a second one if we used the definite forms of the pair perser, parser, i.e. perserna, parserna. The word pair lander equals countries, plural of land and lander equals loins, plural of land could have been included, but this one is controversial. For those speakers who have grave accent in the plural of land, the definite plural forms will also constitute a three-syllable minimal pair, landerna acute accent equals the countries versus landerna grave accent equals the loins. Although examples with more than two syllables are very few in standard Swedish, it is possible to find other three-syllable pairs in regional dialects, such as Varmlandska, Hunera acute, equals the Huns versus Hunera grave, equals the dogs, Andera, Anera acute, equals the ducks versus Andera, Anera grave, equals the ends, etc. Prosody in Swedish often varies substantially between different dialects including the spoken varieties of standard Swedish. As in most languages, stress can be applied to emphasize certain words in a sentence. To some degree prosody may indicate questions, although less so than in English. Phonotactics At a minimum, a syllable must consist of either a long vowel or a short vowel and a long consonant. Like many other Germanic languages, Swedish has a tendency for closed syllables with a relatively large number of consonant clusters in initial as well as final position. 
Though not as complex as that of most Slavic languages, examples of up to seven consecutive consonants can occur when adding Swedish inflections to some foreign loanwords or names, and especially when combined with the tendency of Swedish to make long compound nouns. The syllable structure of Swedish can therefore be described with the following formula. C C C V C C C. This means that a Swedish one-syllable morpheme can have up to three consonants preceding the vowel that forms the nucleus of the syllable, and three consonants following it. Examples: scrams, skirm ts, verb scare, past participle, passive voice, or sprankt s p r t s, verb explode, past participle, passive voice. All but one of the consonant phonemes can occur at the beginning of a morpheme, though there are only six possible three consonant combinations, all of which begin with s, and a total of 31 initial two consonant combinations. All consonants except for h, and can occur finally, and the total number of possible final two consonant clusters is 62. In some cases this can result in near unpronounceable combinations, such as in vastkistskit, squared vistskit, consisting of vastkist west coast with the adjective suffix sk and the neuter suffix t. Central Standard Swedish and most other Swedish dialects feature a rare, complementary quantity, feature wherein a phonologically short consonant follows a long vowel and a long consonant follows a short vowel. This is true only for stressed syllables and all segments are short in unstressed syllables. This arose from the historical shift away from a system with a four-way contrast that is, VC, VC, VC and VC were all possible inherited from Proto-Germanic to a three-way one VC, VC and VC, and finally the present two-way one. Certain Swedish dialects have not undergone these shifts and exhibit one of the other two phonotactic systems instead. In literature on Swedish phonology, there are a number of ways to transcribe complementary relationship, including a length mark for either the vowel, vt, the consonant, vit, or both. Gemination of the consonant, vit, versus, vit. Diphthongization of the vowel, vit, versus, vit. The position of the stress marker, vt, versus, vit, with the conventional assumption that medial long consonants are ambisyllabic that is, pen a, pen, is syllabified as squared pn dot na, all stressed syllables are thus, heavy. In unstressed syllables, the distinction is lost between u and o, or between e. With each successive post-stress syllable, the number of contrasting vowels decreases gradually with distance from the point of stress. At three syllables from stress, only a and a occur. Topic <laughs> sample. The sample text is a reading of the north wind and the sun. The transcriptions are based on the section on Swedish found in the Handbook on the International Phonetic Association. The broad transcription is phonemic while the narrow is phonetic. <laughs> <laughs> broad transcription New Ardanvinden, Su Lane Tivstad N O M V M V D M S M V R Starcast, Jace Du Kame N Vander V N Fram N S V P T N Varm Kappa, D M Kame Du Overns M at D N S M Forst Ken Fo Vandrarn at Ta V S J Kapan, Han S K L Ans S Vra Starkar N D N Andra, Du Blow Saint New Ardanvinden S Ho R T Han N Ensen Ken, M N J Ho Arter Han Blow Saint Dist T Tar S V E P T Vandrarn Kapan M S J TSLT V new Ardanvinden P foers O stroke Kate, do LT Su Lane Sna Stro Lar I Na Helt Varm, Genis Tu Vandrarn V S J Kapan, So V new Ardanvinden TVN at ERNA at Su Lane V DN Starcast V DM TVO Narrow transcription Nu a v n d n, su lane t v, s tad, v m v d m s v s t a k ast, jaste d, o k m, van da v fam n s v, e p t i, v a m k appa, d m k m du o stroke v n s m at d, n s m f k n fo van dan at t v s j k appen, han s k l n s s v star k a n d n n da, du blow saint nu a v n d n so ho han n n s n k n d, m n j ho a ham blow saint dist t ta s v, e p t van da k appen m s j. 
TSLTV NU A VN DN PFO Stroke Kate, Du LT Su Lane Sna Sto La I Nahi LTV A Mount, E Nas TU Van D N V S J K Appen, So V NU A VN DN TV, N at E N A at Su L V N S T A K Ast V D M TV, O Topic Orthographic version Nordanvinden ak solen tavistade en gang om vem avenue dem som var starkast. Just da kom en vandrare vegan fram insvipt i en varm kappa. De kom da overens om at den som forst kunda fa vandroren at ta avenue sig kappen, han skull ansas vara starkare en den andra. Da blaste Nordanvinden sa hart han nansen kunda, men ju hardar han blaste desto tatare svepta vandroren kappen om sig, octil slut gav Nordanvinden up forsoket. Da lot solen sina strailer skina helt varm och genast tag vandroren avenue sig kappen och sa var Nordanvinden tvungen at urkana at solen var den starkaste avenue de tva. <laughs> Notes